A while ago, I did a review of the JinkPad and I said that it had some issues, but I was going to try out other ROMs like the Android one and tell you how it, how it was. Now, you should know that JinkPad and Jink Link in general had some issues or are having some issues right now. I won't go into detail into that because, well, I don't know that much and what I know I cannot reveal but I will just say how the JinkPad actually is as a, an Android tablet. And it's a bit sad to see the JinkPad with Android on it, keeping in mind that, well, it was supposed to be like the Linux tablet. And to be honest, it isn't. Like this is not meant to be the Linux tablet. It works incredibly well as an Android one, but that's what it is. It is an Android tablet. And, you know, I'm a bit sad to see it because it, it really is the Linux tablet that could have been, but no, it's an Android one. And we see it first, first of all, uh, immediately by the fact that the fingerprint reader actually works. I was watching Animus. And out of the box, uh, it won't look like this. This is a launcher, but out of the box, it will have a launcher that actually looks like JingOS. It will be in Chinese. It will have a Chinese keyboard. You need to change it. So let's talk a bit about the software. By default, the apps that you have are not really interesting for our, you know, Occident, uh, Occidental, uh, Western. It's called Western uh, culture. Like Baidu is uh, Jing calendar is not really interesting but of course you cannot uh, you can put any application unless it uses the google play services i try to put a google play services inside of this thing and it just doesn't work however there are many many good apps as an example you can use newpipe to actually watch youtube videos even though you can't use youtube and i gotta say that newpipe is a pretty good application of course it's not loading because it's connected to the wrong Wi-Fi, but now that I will connect the right one, it will start working. Sorry, my Wi-Fi today just doesn't want to collaborate. Oh, now it works. You can actually change the volume with the buttons and you can select quality and everything. Newpipe is a great application. It's also for Android smartphones if you don't know about it. You can also install like Red Reader to go into Reddit. Then there's Twitter, Twitter works just nicely. And performance wise, this thing is just fine. Like I never noticed any lag. The processor isn't that slow. Of course, I don't do any like heavy, heavy usage. I use it to study. And as far as apps go, really there's nothing I'm too big, like I'm too unsatisfied with, except really the fact that Google Play doesn't work with all of the things associated to it. If you have, as an example, paid for some apps, well, you won't get them here because you need the Google Play to use uh, the apps you paid for. Still, there's lots of open source ones that are great, so you can still enjoy it. You can enjoy this tablet regardless. Then another important thing to talk about is the keyboard. Now here I've got keyboard, and uh, but there's also a keyboard, of course, a virtual one. The issue is that the default one uses Chinese and Chinese is n like not my language and probably not yours either. And uh, you will need to change the keyboard. There is a good uh, open source keyboard, uh, any soft key. In this case, I just installed a random keyboard, which is the Microsoft one. I don't like it. Like if I had to use a proprietary keyboard, at least I would go for the Gboard, but Gboard doesn't work. So I just installed something random, but I mean, it works. However, there is an issue when I actually connect this thing as I'm doing right now to the physical keyboard. Now, Android and probably to blame here is indeed Android, but I'm going to blame Jinkpad a bit as well. When you have a keyboard enabled and you uh, select uh, something like you focus something, uses this big uh, gray rectangle that I just couldn't get rid of. And it looks bad and you can say, of course, yeah, it looks bad, but uh, I, at least you can see what you're focusing, which makes sense. However, if you're on an application like, as an example, AnkiDroid, open please, and I start studying, you can see that uh, there's this uh, rectangle which is gray 
the background, it should be black. Like in theory, this, if I go with just my fingers, it's black. But if I go with the keyboard, it becomes gray. And why that is, is that technically speaking, all of the background is focused, meaning that everything is gray. And that is very annoying because sometimes the focus is covering elements. And just the fact that the, co the focus gray element is as big as the whole background is annoying by itself, but sometimes it even covers element. Like uh, I'm very, very annoyed by this. The keyboard shortcuts are, well, the Jingo S ones were a bit better. This is the only area where Jingo S was better. There's absolutely zero shortcuts for the touchpad, which is very sad. It's probably the one thing that bothers me the, the most. Still, you can go with Alt Tab to switch between windows, which is a nice to have. And if you go into settings, uh, you can actually see some other uh, shortcuts that Android have by default, which of course right now I don't remember. Let me actually try to find it here. You can see that I can go home by pressing this button with that, probably this. Yes, as I was saying, uh, this, the search button is actually the Jing pad button. I can go back and resense the lock screen notifications like this. I mean, they're useful, but Jing OS was better. Still, I mean, it's an Android tablet, I don't know. When it actually comes to typing, and I'll open up a typing, uh, I don't know, let's go with fast fingers to actually check how typing is. Italiano, because I'm a bit faster, so it's a more objective thingy. Yeah, sometimes you get the virtual keyboard, even though I'm actually using the physical keyboard right now. So that's a bit weird, but um, ha, please uh, hide. Okay, I'm fantastic, close. Some applications don't implement shortcuts and that's annoying, but that's not really because of Peso. Okay, virtual desktop uh, keyboard it is. So let's see actually how easy to use is this keyboard. Usually with a decent keyboard, I managed to do like 100 words uh, per minute. And everything of course is capitalized, even though it shouldn't. There's probably an option to disable this. Okay, let's try again. It's not bad. Okay, so while I was typing, it broke, which is very nice. Probably some weird things got focused. Uh, I was going pretty fast, so let me try again, but let's stop the video. Okay, so I did 87, which is nice. Could have done higher, uh, I messed up, but still, I think it's a good score. So if you know how to type on a keyboard, the JingPad keyboard is actually not that small. Maybe I'm just used to small keyboards, but I think you can type with this. Of course, all of the buttons that are around the letters are going to be a bit smaller, like backspace, the control is really small. But if you want to buy this for typing, I don't know, text, if you're a writer, honestly, I don't think it's any. I think you can do this. If you're a programmer who needs really a lot of keyboard shortcuts, maybe you'll get used to it, but uh, it will have a bit of a higher uh, steep learning curve. So, I mean, it's an Android tablet. What do you want to do with this? Well, of course, one of the main things you will want to do with Android tablet, especially with this good of a screen, which also gets really bright, of course you don't see it, but gets really bright, is watching uh, media. And given this volume, it's actually pretty good. Now, I'm watching Monogatari, and honestly, like at first, I thought, wait, uh, thanks for this amazing scene, Monogatari. At first I was like, wait, this doesn't make sense. I'm not going to use the Jing pad for watching Monogatari because I want to enjoy Monogatari. And the Jing pad is a terrible device with terrible audio and uh, super slow. But then I installed Android on it and it just works. I can watch it, it has nice audio and everything. Of course, right now it doesn't. It's a bit of a weird, uh, like, aspect ratio because it's very, very tall, but honestly, I've got no device that actually is in a 16.9, so there's no device I can actually watch Monogatari in its intended form factor. And it's not really an issue. The blacks on a OLED screens are quite black. And um, honestly, I, I really like it for watching content. It's really good. You can go in YouTube, you can go high resolution, you can watch anime if you want. Uh, the audio is pretty good. 
the screen is really good and when I thought it was going to be slow, that was because Jingos was missing like hardware resolution and everything. This is in no way slow and it's VLC, so I don't know. There's no issue whatsoever in watching content. So as a content device, this works amazingly. As far as studying goes, I've shown you before my tests uh, and uh, I mean, I've used this to study. I usually like take it as a tablet, this, and bring it, ar bring it around studying all of my notes, but also like uh, PDFs and it's a great device to read PDFs. So, because again, it has a great screen. And I also think the aspect ratio is amazing to study because if you're watching long PDF pages, the fact that it's actually wide helps you when you have vertically to see more stuff, it helps your eyes. Now you might ask, what about the pen? How is the handwriting experience? And my pen arrives tomorrow. So I will let you know, but uh, I wanted to do this video before tomorrow. And luckily that's how timing went. So. I don't know, the, the, the pen that was included in the box was in my opinion not really good and it broke, not just for me, but I already talked about this. So don't rely on the pen that comes with this device. But uh, if you buy a third party pen, I'll tell you how the experience is. I spent like 50 euros on the pen, so it's not too much, a bit more than I wanted, but not too much. Right now this device is, on sale, probably it's still on sale when I publish this video. Maybe not, maybe Jingo has already disappeared. Maybe they went famous, I don't know. The price for this thing is very, very high like normally, but with the sale, it's actually uh, very appealing because I think it's like 350 or something. And for 350, you're getting a very, very good screen, decent speakers, decent keyboard, a fingerprint reader, which is a very nice to have. The processor is okay, it's not super fast, but I never noticed lags either with a very casual uh, use case. In theory, in theory, in here you should also get, here you also get a slot for your uh, SIM card. However, I haven't tried that yet. It didn't work on Jingo S, but you know, maybe it will actually work using the Android ROM. So that might be interesting. Now it's bigger. What else? It's an Android tablet. Install a launch here because it's the best launcher and uh, it works. I play games on this. Let, let me play a bullet. So I show you. In Jingo S I had some like lag when doing things, but now it just works nicely. I have no complaint whatsoever about the speed of the stuff. Last time I actually lost like a what? Uh, because of how slow this was, but uh, now it's fine really. He hung mate, he hung mate in one, look at here. Ah yes, mm, let me say that it's very annoying when actually apps don't implement keyboard shortcuts properly. Like if you are on uh, the Liches website, using arrows will uh, jump between moves but in here it does nothing. So the keyboard, as nice as it is, it doesn't really work. Like I use it almost always without the keyboard because it's meant to be used as a tablet. And whereas something like the Samsung Tab actually tries to modify Android to make sure that it, actually, it works as well as a computer, and this one doesn't. This one is a tablet. It's meant to be used as a tablet. You don't even get like floating windows. You you get split screen and that's it. And sure, this is nice, but if you have like a touchpad with buttons, you would expect some floating window manager like Samsung Dex has. Uh, but I mean, Jingos, this was intended to have Jingos, but it, it clearly isn't. The hardware is made to be used with Android. Jingos doesn't work on this. Hopefully we'll also get like an Ubuntu port. The people working on the JinkPad also released the Android ROM as open source. However, I sent the open source code to somebody that was like working on these kind of things. And it was like, I don't understand anything they're saying. So they also published the source code, not on GitHub, but 
divided into eight different zip folders uploaded on Mega, which is the worst way to actually share source code, like, ouch. But I mean, better than nothing, I guess. And in theory, that should help other uh, port operating systems to the But if somebody ports like, I don't know, full-fledged KD Plasma desktop on this thing, I will be super, super, super happy. Or I don't know, Ubuntu Touch, I will also understand and try it out. But right now, this thing is keeping Android because Android right now is the only operating system that actually gives sense to this tablet. This tablet, as nice as it is, it's made for Android. This is an Android tablet. Could have been, could have been maybe a Linux tablet with a bit more, could have been a Linux tablet with a bit more care and using the right tools to actually de develop an operating system. But Jing West decided to do everything, everything from scratch and they messed up. I don't know what else to say. This could have been a nice Linux tablet. It isn't. It is an Android one. A good one. It is a very, very good Android tablet. That was everything. Thanks for following. And there's now the animation with all of the people who donated to me, which I thank a lot because it's what allows me to do all of these videos. I will do them hopefully more regularly this time, but it's going really well. And I will also get more hardware to review soon and uh, stay tuned for that. I am also doing like videos every day. And by the way, it's my YouTube birthday. Like I joined YouTube making videos a year and something ago. So yeah, I think I will do a stream to celebrate that later on. So stay tuned and see you tomorrow.